Alrighty, so I just had to make this video for you because I get this question all the time because I teach algebra is how in the world do we use this in everyday life? So I'm stuck at home quarantine. I can't stop watching the news. I've been watching the numbers and it's just so much math involved in all of this. And so I just want to break it down for you to show you how that algebra that you'll be learning in class is used in the real world. So come on, take a minute, step inside with me as I walk you through the process of um, looking at the number of coronavirus cases and the number of coronavirus deaths. So I'm in my kitchen. This is my new classroom, my kitchen. And look who my audience is. <laughs> Wait, y'all. <laughs> this is my new audience. Well, hopefully you all will tune in as well. So what is algebra? Algebra, um, the overall goal of algebra is to study different types of functions. So what we do is we collect data, some type of data, whatever kind of data you're interested in, between two variables, we plot the data, we look at the shape of that plot, and then we create a model or an equation that represents that data, and we use that equation for various things, which is what you're seeing happening today with the outbreak of the coronavirus. So just to give you a quick walkthrough of the different types of functions that we study in algebra, when we plot the data, if it's anything that looks like a line, anything linear of this sort, we call it a linear function. If it's U-shaped, we call it quadratic. If it goes like this, goes up, kind of curves, continues to go up, we call it cubic. If it's shaped like this, it's square root. If it's shaped like this, it's cube root. Shaped in this fashion, V-shaped, it's an absolute value function. If it starts at zero or a little bit above zero and it continues to increase and it starts increasing rapidly, that's an exponential function. And then if it has this shape, it is a logarithmic function. So this is just some general basic parent functions that we study in college algebra. Now, you have to first have data. And so that's what I have here. Okay, what I have here is I'm just in a simple Excel spreadsheet and I have input the data for the number of cases in the USA versus the number of days. So I started with day one on February 15th. Now the first case was actually detected in the United States on January 21st, but I started on the 15th because I've been tracking the data from a website called Worldometers. And this is the first date where they have um, the number of cases listed. So day one is 15 cases. So day two, 15 cases, day three, 15 cases. You can see it stayed on 15 cases all the way until day seven, which was February 21st, there were 35 cases. And so we go down, I go down all the way until, so at the beginning of this month, the 16th day, there were 75 cases. And so I have all the data listed all the way up until yesterday, the 25th, which was the 40th day. There were 68,211 cases. All right, so this is the data. My independent variable is the day, the number of days, where day one represents February 15th. My dependent variable is the number of coronavirus cases in the US. So I plotted that data using a scatter plot. So let me show you what that looked like. And here is the graph of it. So if you look at the graph, you look at the shape basically that the plots create. And if you look at the shape that the plots create, you can see that is in the shape of the exponential function that we showed you earlier. So if you remember that shape that I just showed you, if you look at these parent functions, that shape closely resembles this one right here, which is an exponential function. And so that's why you've been hearing a lot of news reporters and people saying that the number of cases are growing exponentially because it's following this model right here. And so what we want to do now, and this is what the whole point of algebra is, is we want to create an equation to estimate the growth of the number of cases in the USA. Now, there are a lot of sophisticated technology that actually does this, but typically in a math classroom, we use this piece of technology right here, which is a TI-83 calculator. Some people use the 84 as well. Um, so I'm just gonna show you how to create a basic model to represent the growth of the number of coronavirus cases in the USA. Okay, so to start off in the calculator, the first thing you wanna do is go to stat. When you go to stat, it's gonna show a screen that looks like this, and you wanna to go to number one, which is edit. 
So number one is edit, and then what you want to do is list all of the data points in your first two lists. So I have L1 and L2. So L1 is just the days, 1 through 40. And then L2 is all of the number of cases. So just what I showed you in the spreadsheet, I put them in the calculator. So the next thing I want to do is I want to go back to stat. This time I'm going to scroll over to where it says calc. And then I'm going to scroll down to where I see. So there are different types of um, regression you could do. And that depends on the shape of the graph. But I want to go down to where it says exponential. I think I passed it. Yeah, so zero says exponential regression. That's the one I want to do. And I want to hit enter. And then I want to go back and put what I want my independent variable, independent variable to be. So this time I'm going to go to second stat, which is the list. And I'm going to go to number one. You can see it pops up L1. And then I'm going to put a comma. Then I'm going to put a comma, which is here. And then I'm going to go back to second stat. And this time I'm going to go to L2, which is number two. And then, oh, I have an extra comma in there. I'm just going to scroll over and delete it. I'm going to put another comma, and then I'm going to go to this time where it says VARS. And I'm going to scroll over to Y variables as Y variables. I'm going to go to number one function, and then I'm going to go Y1. So that's defining the function. And I'm going to hit enter. And when I hit enter, it's going to give me the um, numbers that go into the exponential function to model, to model this graph. So these are the numbers. A is 4.169 and B, I'm rounding it to three decimal places. B is 1.257. So this is the standard form of your exponential equation, y equals A times B to the X. Again, it's called an exponential function because the variable is in the exponent. Um, so remember the numbers that I just showed you, we got from the calculator. The A was 4.169 and the B was 1.257. So all I did was replace the A with 4.169 and replace the B with 1.257. And so this gives me my equation, my exponential equation that models the growth of the number of coronavirus cases in the US. Y represents the number of cases. Again, X represents the number of days, where day one is whatever the day, first day was, I forgot. What was it, February 20, February 15th, my bad. Okay. So I want to know how many, I want to use this equation to model how many cases we can expect at the end of the month, which is March 31st. And so today or yesterday, March 25th was day number 40. So six days out will be day number 46. So March 31st, that day, day number will be 46. Again, that's because yesterday, the 25th, was the 40th day. Six days out, I just add six to 40, and it gives me 46. So I'm gonna plug in 46 for the number of days, and then I'm gonna plug this into the calculator. And again, I'm just gonna show you quickly how to plug that in the calculator. 4.169 times 1.257 raised to the 46th power. And then you hit enter. And this is the number you get, 154,687 cases. So by the end of the month, we can expect to have 154,687 cases of coronavirus, people that test positive for coronavirus in the U.S. Now, the thing that we also want to model, because these are the numbers, or this is the way government is looking at models to make decisions about whether we should shut down or whether we should stay open. Um, but the number we really were really interested in is the number of deaths. Okay, so I'm taking you back to my Excel spreadsheet. This time I have the number of days versus the number of deaths. And as you can see, the number of deaths each day is also growing. So there were no deaths for a long time. And then around day 20, we started to see people dying. Um, and as you can see, the number of deaths is also growing exponentially. So I went through and I did the same exact thing on the graph and calculated to determine the equation that models the number of deaths. And this was the value I got for A, 0 0.078. And this was the value I got for B, 1.263. 
So this gives us a, an equation to model the estimated number of dents, assuming we do nothing. Um, and so if I plug that in my calculator, again, I want to estimate how many dents we could possibly have on day 46, which would be the end of the month, March 31st. So I'm going to plug this in my calculator to get an estimate for it. 0 0.078 times 1.263 raised to the 46th power. Hit enter. And if I round that to the nearest whole number, we can expect to have 3,603 deaths by the end of the month um, in the U.S. And so the, again, this is using the exponential model that's created from the TI-83 calculator. Again, there are more computer programs that, are, that will give you more sophisticated models. Um, so what the government is doing is they're looking at these models and they're looking at the prediction of the numbers and they're using that to make decisions about whether we should shut down, for how long should we shut down, um, whether kids could go to school or so forth. And one of the things is that the epicenter where this all started in China, they have modeled data there as well. And I want to show you something really quick. Okay, so this graph that I'm showing you here, this is the graph for the number of cases in China. And as you can see, it started off increasing exponentially. And then it increased a little more, did something funny there, and then it started to level off. So this is what they mean by flattening the curve. So if we do things, put things in place, then that will help slow the spread of the virus, which will then begin to start flattening the curve. Now, just to throw this out there. China went on a mandatory quarantine early on in the spread of the virus and it still took them a while about a month if you notice from January 22nd the curve started flattening around February 18th February 21st so it still took them about a month to start flattening the curve and they went on a mandatory quarantine like right at the beginning so what that could imply is that it might take us here in the U.S. a little longer than a month to start flattening out the curve, especially since the whole country is not on a mandatory quarantine. So this was just a short, quick lesson on how algebra is used in the real world, specifically how it applies to what we're going through now with the coronavirus and this epidemic. Um, there are many, many more applications of how algebra is used in the real world, but I thought this was really important to put out because all of these decisions that are being made Everything that they're looking at, when you hear the press conferences and they say you got to listen to the data, you got to follow the data, that's all math related. Without math, we wouldn't be able to look at that and make these predictions and determine the decisions that need to be made. So math is really, really important. It's everywhere. If you never believed it, I hope that this really convinces you that we need math. It's important that we understand math and we know how to actually do the math to be able to um, understand the world around us. So if you like this video, please share it, first of all, and subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. Um, if you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comments as well below. And I hope that you found this video enlightening and I hope you learned something. And thanks again for tuning in.